I'm Dr. Matt, and I've got the perfect cure for that headache, backache, toothache, heartache, handshake, cornflake, tummy ache. It's called meth. <laughs> Ride the snake. <laughs> All right, well, obviously I'm not a doctor and prescribing meth sounds nuts, but there have been some insane treatments prescribed by medical experts who arguably didn't know better. And what's really disturbing is that these were all commonly used in the past. If a physician used any of the methods you're going to hear about today, they'd be in jail. So what exactly are they? Here are 10 banned medical practices you won't believe existed. Number one is mercury. It definitely sounds crazy, but there was a time when people thought that the best way to treat syphilis was to ingest mercury. Side effects included losing your teeth, damage to internal organs, or simply death. Using mercury as a cure began as early as 1500 BC in Egypt and was believed to cure ailments, heal wounds, and even prolong life. <laughs> it was, turned out to be the exact opposite. They also used to use mercury ointments, pills, and lotions to treat all sorts of ailments, attributing the side effects and deaths to the underlying condition the patient already had. Nowadays, we're weary about mercury in fish. Back then, they were drinking it like it was an ale. Ah, right, give me some mercury. Yeah, I feel great. Uh. Number two is radioactive water. It's hard to believe, but in the early 1900s, radium was all the rage. Today we know that exposure to radium causes cancer, but back then it was used as a cure for mental illness, diarrhea, malaria, and was even thought to prevent aging due to increased cell activity. And what better way to get this stuff into consumers' bodies than to sell it as bottled water? That's right, radium-infused water could be purchased in many stores alongside radium-infused chocolate, radioactive tooth paste and why not radioactive suppositories up and at um eh? number three is whirling chairs between 1850 and 1900 in an attempt to stop the practice of restraining the mentally ill and locking them in dark cells yes that actually happened doctors turned to a method they genuinely thought could help strapping patients into a chair and spinning them until they lost consciousness Yep, that'll get the voices to stop. They used a simple chair with a lever system to spin the person around. The belief was that this would shuffle the contents of the patient's brain around, knocking out conditions like schizophrenia. Used alongside other unbelievable practices like high dose laxatives, insulin comas, and ice water baths, it took far too long for doctors to learn that this really wasn't working. Just made a whole lot of vomit. Just. Buckets, buckets of vomit. Number four is the lobotomy. Often declared as one of the most barbaric mistakes ever perpetrated by mainstream medicine, lobotomies involved driving a large ice pick into a patient's head. <laughs> Follow me on this. Entering through the eye socket, the spike was pressed into the prefrontal cortex of the brain and then struck with a hammer. Doctors truly believed that whatever the outcome, the patient would still be better off than they were pre-lobotomy. Side effects included severe brain damage or even death, which was the case with John F. Kennedy's sister who, after a lobotomy, was reduced mentally to an infant and never recovered. How, how did they ever think that driving an ice pick through the eye into the brain was ever a good idea? Just, it's scary stuff. Number five is the electrical impotence cure. By the 1900s, everybody and their brother had a miracle cure for anything. And disturbingly, many of them were for male <clears throat> issues D down there with your dick. Anywho, as fascination with electricity was on the rise, medical practitioners turned to it to solve impotence by shocking the hell out of a man's Package. It was widely believed that a shock provided energy to a man's body, which he could use to rise to the occasion. Of course, what they didn't tell you until after they were paid was that not only was there no real science involved in it, but it was incredibly painful. Dudes these days be buying these online enhancement pills and all they really needed was a car battery and some jumper cables. Science! Number six is tree panning. The twisted cousin of lobotomy, tree panning was used for many years and involved drilling into a mentally ill patient's head. As one of the oldest methods of treatment, tree panning dates all the way back to 6500 BC in France and consisted of drilling burr holes into a patient's skull to 
let the evil spirits out. <laughs> the mentally ill were often mistaken to be possessed by demons, and as we all know, the only way to get a demon out of your head is to make a little hole for it to get out of. Long after science recognized mental illness, however, tree painting was still used when all other treatments failed, as doctors just drilled a few holes to see what happens. Uh, science, doctors, if I ever become ill, please don't treat my head like a bowling ball. Just if there's demons in there, just let them chill. Just let them chill. I don't want no holes, okay? Just let them chill. They're living, and then I'll die. I'll die. That's cool. I just, I don't want to be a Matthew Santoro bowling ball. That's, that's disturbing. Number seven is bloodletting. A treatment used for over 2,000 years until the late 1800s, bloodletting was the act of draining blood from the body. Now, while this is still done in a way today, it's nothing like it used to be. Many doctors used to believe that blood would pool in certain places and that was why people got sick. Vast quantities of it would be drained from the body for ridiculous reasons like a stuffy nose or even a headache. Obviously, this caused many deaths, but once again, practitioners just chalked up the loss of life to the illness itself or state of mind of the patient. Fun fact, barbers were the most common bloodletters and that's the reason they use red and white poles. Disturbing, I know. Think about that next time you walk by a barber. Nightmares for days. Number eight is urine therapy. Urine therapy was the practice of using one's own pee to cure them of ailments. Sometimes it would be the patient's own urine, but other times it was a healthy person's or even the doctor's. How generous. It was thought that by drinking urine or applying it around affected areas, it could help heal broken bones, clear up strep throat, cure acne, or even whiten teeth. <laughs> Don't get any ideas. Though technically debunked, there are some people still in the world that claim to gain the benefits from this truly bizarre form of therapy. So careful where you go in the world because that's that lemonade may not be lemonade. Number nine is Miss Winslow's Soothing Syrup. Hey, want a quick way to stop your child from throwing a temper tantrum? Well, don't worry. With Miss Winslow's Soothing Syrup, they'll be calm and cool and halfway into a coma in no time. Sold in the early 1900s as a remedy for children with ailments such as cold, fever, rambunctiousness, or even if a parent just wanted to catch a quick nap, Miss Winslow's remedy was fast acting mostly because it contained heroin, cannabis, powdered opium, morphine, and an insane slew of other substances. The cocktail proved deadly to those children who didn't mellow out, and to top it off, it was marketed to parents of babies who were teething and thus always crying. Mom and dad can finally relax by putting your child to sleep forever. That was a scary time to be alive, medical science. And number 10, the tobacco enema. Let me just say first of all that all the remedies you've heard of today are 100% true. I am not blowing smoke up your ass. Although, if you lived in the 1700s and needed emergency life-saving treatment, that's exactly what they do. It was actually believed that tobacco smoke could warm up a person's body just before or immediately after death and could jumpstart the respiratory system. Of course, the best place to jumpstart the lungs and the heart is through the butt using rubber rectal tubes. Doctors claimed that this practice would combat hernias, typhoid fever, and even headaches. And then in 1811, it was discovered that this is really doing just way more damage than helping and tobacco enemas were discontinued. I think the moral of the story here, friends, is just don't try to smoke with your butt. Just don't smoke with your butt. Leave the anus, don't smoke with your butt. It's, it's a helpful tip, you're welcome. And those were 10 banned medical practices that actually existed. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have a recommendation for a topic of a top 10, please leave a comment below and I'll be reading through your comments. Remember to click that red subscribe button to be notified of my future videos on this channel. On the right, you'll find an annotation to my last video, as well as an annotation to get some merch if you feel like picking up some cool shirts. As well, you'll also find an annotation to my second channel where I make vlogs, unboxings, and much more. So be sure to subscribe to that and I will see all of you next next time with a brand new video. Uh, 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 uh.